Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani. Today's video is gonna be on your gut bacteria and how it can affect your blood sugar. There are millions of people today that have something called insulin resistance. Essentially, that's where your cells become numb to the hormone that helps bring sugar or glucose into your cells for energy. And with that high level of insulin, that can create lots of inflammation and lots of other health issues. So let's dig in and go over this study that just came out recently on gut bacteria and how it can actually have a negative effect and cause insulin resistance even without all of the diet things going on as well. So let's break it down. There was a study by the Journal of Metabolism in 2015. The abbreviated title was Activity of the Innate Immune System and How It Modulates Insulin Sensitivity and how your body uptakes and utilizes glucose for energy. Now in this study, they compared two populations. They, can, they compared African-American men and women and uh, European men and women. And they saw a different relationship with, between the two, but each group still had a negative effect to this lipopolysaccharide, or it's called endotoxin. And lipopolysaccharide is simply this. Here's your bacteria. The bacteria has two cell walls. This is the first cell wall. The second cell wall is out here. And the lipopolysaccharide are the little sun rays that beam off the cell just like this. And lipopolysaccharide and endotoxin, they're the same thing. And just like the last half of that word toxin, it is toxic on your body and on your liver. So these little outside sun ray thingies here, and in this study they used a compound um, in E. coli, and they did it point the one nanogram per kilogram, and they injected this into the body pre and post glucose, and they were looking at how blood sugar was affected by this endotoxin. So that's what the endotoxin is. The endotoxin lives out here at the edge of the gut bacteria. Now, how is that important to you and me here? Well, a lot of people have something known as leaky gut, and one of the prime drivers of leaky gut can be infections, gluten, and as well as lipopolysaccharide from a dysbiotic overgrowth of your gut bacteria. So in our gut, we have beneficial bacteria and we have dysbiotic bacteria. And you can see here is our little seesaw. So when dysbiotic bacteria, right, this is heavier, goes up and the beneficial bacteria goes down, we are increasing our LPS. So LPS is going up here. Now we know because of this study that LPS can have a negative effect on our, how our body utilizes glucose. So let's break down this study. I'm gonna come back to what I mentioned up here and I'm gonna try to connect the dots. It's kind of complicated, but I just want everyone to, to grab the take home pieces here. So in this study, they gave glucose right? They gave 0.3 grams per kilogram. So for someone like me, I'm a six foot two, 200 pound male. That's going to be about 27 grams per about 200 pounds. They gave a little bit of insulin at 0.03 U per kg, 20 minutes post. So they gave the glucose first, they waited 20 minutes and they injected some insulin. They took 21 samples over this time frame. They injected LPS pre and post glucose. Now, LPS, that's the toxin I drew above with the little sun rays, and what they found is insulin sensitivity actually decreased. What that means is if you need this amount of insulin to take your glucose down into your cell, well, now that means if it decreased, you need more insulin to get the same job done. It's like driving a car and you get 20 miles per the gallon, and then now, because of some kind of metabolic uh, little um, thing that's happened under the hood, now you're getting 15 or 10 miles per the gallon. So your efficiency drops. So when I talk about insulin sensitivity dropping, that's like getting less miles per gallon in your car, except in your body, insulin can have negative reactions like cell growth, it can cause um, your blood sugar to glycate because you have a lot more sugar in your body, it can increase risk for cancer, polycystic ovarian syndrome, it can increase androgen levels, in women, it can increase estrogen levels in men via the aromatase enzyme, so a lot of negative consequences by having this high level of insulin. In the study, they also found that your body's ability to utilize insulin, and this is the, the indication is called the DI, your body's ability to utilize insulin uh, dropped as well. So essentially, if we increase insulin 50%, we should see a 50% drop in blood sugar. And what happened was, as we increased insulin, we didn't get the same kind of drop. So insulin levels went up and we didn't see the corresponding drop in glucose, because insulin helps bring things into the body. 
Now that means our body's not gonna be effectively using that blood sugar well. That's what that means. Now the key thing is, we've talked about in the past how excess carbohydrates, especially from grains and refined sugar, can cause these problems. But what the take home here is that gut bacteria imbalances can do the exact same thing. Now what happens if we have gut bacteria imbalances and we have a diet with lots of refined carbohydrate, and for some people that may just be a little bit, some people a lot more, extra alcohol, extra grains, and the gut bacteria issue, you can see we're messing with fire, we're increasing autoimmunity because we know LPS also can increase our leaky gut. And that's nothing more than the tight junctions in our intestinal tract going like this to slightly opening up and then undigested food particles slipping through and creating more of an inflammation response in the immune system. So let's break down what's actually happening in the body when sugar comes in. So imagine our little triangle here. This is insulin up here. This is glucose. So imagine we take a meal and we have some carbohydrates. We increase glucose. Glucose goes up. Glucose is then broken down into its small constituent products. This is like a bolus of glucose, if you will, right? Maybe it's from sugar, maybe it's from uh, carbohydrate, complex carbohydrate, but it breaks down into glucose. What happens first thing is we have insulin. Insulin's the gatekeeper, right? Insulin's the, the bellman at the hotel that opens the door up for you first. So you gotta get the bellman's permission to come in. So we have insulin hits this receptor site. You can see it's a triangle. The receptor site's triangle, kind of like a lock and key. The insulin hits there, and what happens when the insulin goes into the body is a couple of things. It starts generating free fatty acid synthesis. So your body is now making extra fat from the glucose. So wrap, I'll say that one more time, wrap your head around it. We're actually making extra fat from the carbohydrate that we're taking in. So we can actually get fat by not even eating fat. And you can imagine what happens if we eat a whole bunch of sugar and a whole bunch of bad junky fats, that gets even worse. So extra sugar and extra bad fats is definitely a death spiral right there. So first thing, free fatty acid goes up. We increase pyruvate as well to help generate energy in the Krebs cycle. And then we also here, number two, we hit the glucose receptor and then we basically, the Bellman's now opening the door, it's opening the door and it's allowing the glucose to now come in. And once the glucose comes in, because insulin is a storage hormone, it's bringing it into the cell and it's now allowing that glucose right here to get stored as a glycogen, right? So glycogen storage. So one more time, glucose knocks on the door, the bellman then goes and escorts glucose in. While glucose is being escorted in, we increase free fatty acids, we get some pyruvate, and then we store that glucose as glycogen. So that's what's happening. And now the problem is, connecting back to the gut with the LPS and the bad bacteria, that's gonna make this problem happen worse, meaning it's gonna intensify the amount of insulin, and when insulin resistance happens, now we need basically more. We need maybe two of these insulin molecules here to get the same response. And then at some point, three. So the resistance is nothing more than the bellman needs two insulins or three insulins to escort the glucose in. And that's a problem because of all the negative consequences I mentioned. Advanced glycation end products, androgen, estrogen growth, and all kinds of other inflammation intermediates. So that's the problem. And this is gonna be intensified by diet, by diet, and by gut bacteria. Now many people have the diet under control. At least the people that are tuning in or working with me. We have the diet under control. And if not, that's the first place to start. That's why it's number one. The next piece is gonna be the gut, the gut bacteria. And that's where it's really important to see a functional medicine professional or doctor like myself where you can roll up your sleeves, dig in, and find out what underlying bacterial issues are present. If bacterial issues are present, we gotta dig in and we gotta get to the underlying cause of why that's there. So if you're struggling with your gut issues, click on screen and reach out and we'll be able to help you. And then also subscribe to more videos coming soon. Again, this is Dr. J signing out. Thanks, have a great day.